Are the health insurance mobile applications tracking and sharing your data? Yes, they are. Hi, I'm Kevin Knauss with insuremekevin.com and most health plans have developed a mobile application for you to put on your phone or tablet so that you can check claims, set up doctor appointments, get online uh, doctor uh, consultations, and that is all wonderful. However, these mobile applications are doing something far larger than just delivering you health plan information. They are tracking you. And of course, we kind of know this. That's the way the internet has been kind of set up when Google got involved and the other search engines, that they are tracking what you are doing online, what you are clicking. And the goal is to create a user profile. So initially, the user profile is, is kind of fuzzy and it's, it's just a number attached to a mobile device. But as the internet progressed and the mobile phones came on and the tablets, picture got clear because they can get more information. And of course, you're still just a number, but all of this information that they were gathering was to develop advertising to deliver to you because that's where they make their money. They deliver you ads based on your profile. And the more information they have about you, the better the ads they can deliver and there's a higher click-through rate. And, and the mobile applications are just in, insidious. They're, they're pernicious. They're, they're collecting all sorts of data even if you opt out. And this is you. This is a picture of you, which they own and nobody can see it except them. And I know you're saying, Kevin, you're nuts. You know, how do you know this is all going on? Have you seen the data? I've seen some of the data, um, but all we have to do is look at the privacy policies, poli the privacy statements for some of these mobile applications. So I downloaded the Blue Cross Sydney Health application to kind of look at it. And a lot of the information that I'm going to be reviewing comes from the privacy statements on these applications. Now, the first thing that pops up when you go to download the, the Sydney app uh, is, do you want us to track you? Well, heck no, but it doesn't really make a difference. They're going to find out where you are at and where you went. Going through the, the privacy statement, they talk about we may use cookies, and that helps improve you know, the, how the website works and everything. The application is a giant cookie. It is vacuuming up all sorts of behavioral data on you as you move through different websites and apps. And it is also creating a 3D picture of your digital profile as it goes through and collects this information go a little bit further into the privacy statement and they talk about gathering internet protocol addresses because you know when you log on to a Wi-Fi or um, that IP address is associated with the location so even if you don't want to track you some application on your phone knows that you know first you're in Sacramento then you're in Modesto to visit your mother and you use the Wi-Fi down there boom they know that you now travel between Sacramento and Modesto. So <laughs> you can turn off the tracking portion all you want, but it's not going to make any difference. Another portion of the privacy statement, we may also gather quantitative user information. Uh, quantitative, that means a lot. And now they say they will not sell, license, or transmit, or disclose personal information. And I do want to emphasize that none of your personal identifying information or personal health information is being sold or shared. You know, social security numbers, your name and, and whatnot. There are laws that prevent that, HIPAA regulations. Uh, that's all top secret stuff. But when you realize what the app is gathering on you and how it can work with other apps and things that you make, it, you can see that it's pretty easy that they can virtually put a name to that uh, machine number called your mobile phone 
or your tablet. And even if it's just a number, you know, they still have lots of information that they're gathering. Of course, they say that they do work with uh, third parties and uh, who may place persistent cookies, web beacons, or similar technologies um, to collect in anonymous information. Why? Why would they do that? And, and at the bottom, it says, this is to customize our content in advertising. There we go. Advertising. That's what this is all about, to generate advertising dollars for this app and other third parties. We go down further. It talks about um, do not track signals. And the do not track signal, you can put that on your, your browser and they're effectively saying, we don't really care. We don't, we're, we're ignoring that because there is no universal system for, you know, de-identifying the tracking. They're just gonna do it anyhow. Uh, up above that, they note a threat. And please note that some parts of this application may not function properly or be available to you. And that's, you know, you need to turn everything on in the app so they can gather all the information on you. It's a threat for you to comply and give them all of your information. Now, within the Sydney uh, Health app, there is a, another provider app called K Health. And um, all these privacy statements, uh, they're, they're a little bit different. Some of them give more information. And so if you use a K-Health provider, you know, I guess you have to kind of opt into it. Um, but it's a whole other app collecting all other sorts of uh, data on you. And going through that one, they talk about how they collect uh, non-personal information, and, such as browsing activities and browser information, app use data, information collected through cookies, pixel tags, and other technologies. So now you have two apps that are collecting data on you to create a digital profile. And you scroll down further, and again, there it is. They're, they're collecting all this information for marketing materials and facilitating social sharing. What is social sharing? What does that even mean? What, that, 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 that makes no sense to me. Why would anything be shared socially about you? Scroll down further, they talk about disclosure of personal information, and they're gonna be sharing it potentially with affiliates, partners, and third parties. Who in the are these third parties? Did, 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 you, did you opt into giving your information to someone that you've never met or talked to? No, you didn't. But by using the app, there's an implicit agreement that you have. Again, there, there's rules around this, but they, they, they're not following the rules. They're just gathering your information. And the picture becomes clear when you scroll down and you look at other information and they are collecting demographic information on you. Uh, now, they're not going to reveal your specific identity, but, <laughs> you know, if you, if you like football and you go to football apps, that's, gonna, that's part of your demographics. What schools you went to, you know, plays, sports, all kinds of stuff to develop a digital profile that they can then share, sell to other parties for advertising purposes. And you have no control over any of this. Go down a little bit further and they talk about, you know, Google Analytics. And that's how they're crunching the numbers to get all the information on you. Physical location. Again, even though you said do not track me in the Sydney app, this K-Health thing, they may be tracking you based on satellite, cell phone towers and Wi-Fi signals. So you, you really can't. It's very difficult to get around it. And of course, it's all about online advertising. And then the question becomes, what else? What else are they gonna use this data for? Well, some people have already speculated that they're using it in, uh, for loans to determine risk, because especially with insurance, it's all about minimizing the risk. All of this data collection about your profile is to predict your behavior because that reduces the risk when someone is selling you something or insuring you. So it's all really a little bit scary. Then you get down to third-party services. 
and they say, yeah, essentially they're saying, we're not responsible for anything the third party does with the data that uh, we share with them or they collect from you. It, it's, not, it, it's out of our hands. So <laughs> they've collected this profile, they've shared part of it, and who knows what someone's doing with it. That's not my problem. I just, I just painted your picture. I just gave it to that other guy. Oscar Health, they came into the marketplace and their whole focus was around the application for uh, the health plan. And that was pretty much to reduce their labor expense because if everything or a bulk of the consumer, uh, the member questions are going or being solved through the application, that means they don't have to have a person that you call for, for information. So that reduces their labor. And of course, Oscar, they talk about putting on cookies and tags uh, for customer service. Um, then you go down in, at least Oscar, they kind of go through and they spell out all the different things that they're uh, collecting. Some of it, you know, is protected. They cannot share that. But if someone knows your browsing history and they understand how to crunch the numbers, they can make a pretty good guess that you're a football fan if you're going to some of the different sites. And potentially, what team you are a big fan for. But of course, they're collecting browsing history, search history uh, regarding consumer interaction with internet websites and applications or advertisements. And this is all, they, they couch this uh, to make you feel good. This, they're collecting the information to help you, to enhance your experience. <laughs> they're doing it for advertising, to sell you something, to sell you something. Um, now, of course, they, Oscar, says that we're going to de-identify your personal information, which, you know, that really doesn't mean much when they've got all of your browser history and everything else. Um, that mobile phone uh, code, you know, it's developed a pretty good profile when it picks up all the other data from all the other applications and things that you're doing with your phone. Now, the, the next one going through is talking about assets and how the data they collect um, you know, if we go out of business, enter bankruptcy, or go through some other change of control, personal information could be one of the assets transferred to or acquired by a third party. You are their asset. You did not give them permission to be on their balance sheet. You are there. You can't see it. You can't control it. But if they go bankrupt or they are bought by someone else, your personal data information that you generated by being on your phone or your tablet is now their asset. I, something's wrong with this picture. Now, one of the last statements is they don't, in the past 12 months, have not sold any information to third parties. Okay. That didn't mean they didn't share it. It just means they didn't sell it. This is really the Wild West in terms of data collection and painting a portrait, a digital portrait of you to then pass around to other people for, at a minimum, advertising. And who knows what else they will be using and doing with the information. Just thought you may want to know. For insuremekevin.com, I'm Kevin Knaus. If you want to learn more about how these apps and the whole internet industry is gathering your data, I would recommend reading uh, Soshana Zuboff's book, The Age of Surveillance Capitalism, The Fight for a Human Future at the New Frontier of Power. It's incredibly well-written well-researched and gives a lot of details about how this Wild West industry that is virtually uh, ignoring any rules and creating their own rules as they go along is essentially creating our profiles of our behavior and then declaring it their own.